To create an action bound, you'll first need an account. So when you first come to the site, this will be a login menu instead, and you'll sign in. Um, and you'll create both a password and a username, um, but your account will be under your email address that you have. So when you create your account, it will prompt you to create your first bound, um, but you can always come up here uh, to this menu to create a bound or to look at public bounds. So that's always there for you. So once you click create bound, it will prompt you to give it a name. This is just Doc Malone demo. Um, and then you'll start adding content. So when you click this plus button, you've got different uh, options that you can do. So the stage option is if this is a long scavenger hunt. Um, so let's say for example, you're teaching an art class and you want students to go to the McNe um, and the San Antonio Museum of Modern Art or something like that. You can break them into stages uh, so that they know that this is going to be at one location versus another location. Um, and then information is just a text um, or it says media. You can put in video and pictures and stuff, but it's just basically a text box for you in case you need to give them extra instructions. Quiz uh, does what it says on the box. It asks them a question. A mission asks them to do something where there is no right or wrong answer. So a mission is where they go to that spot and take a selfie or go to that spot and grab some free swag or something like that. Um, so that's what that is. And then we have find spot. Find spot, they have to actually go to the GPS coordinates of it. And so this is something where, uh, let's say you have a first year experience class uh, and you're trying to get them used to campus itself, uh, this would be a good one for uh, just putting the uh, the fountain on there or something uh, so that they know uh, different markers around campus, different important spots around campus, uh, and they've actually been to them. Scan code is if you have uh, QR codes that you want to use in your scavenger hunt where they have to actually go to the spot, scan it with their phones, and then um, and then it will bring up some information for them. And then survey is what it says on the box, which is just a little survey feature. Um, and then the tournament uh, allows them to play against one another. So these are all um, the different tools that you'll have to put together a bound. I'm gonna put together a very short one today. Um, and uh, we can talk a little bit too about accessibility. So one of the things you wanna remember is this is, this is a great tool. Um, in terms of academic technology, uh, gamifying your class a little bit, but uh, this requires uh, physical movement, right? And so you want to think about the, the students in your class who might have limited mobility, whether that is documented limited mobility or um, limited mobility that has just kind of come up in their lives for whatever reason. And so if you are going to put together a bound, it's a really, really good idea to make sure that the things you put on there are accessible. Uh, so we want to look for things like ramps on campus, long sidewalks, wide sidewalks. Um, if you're doing things on campus, if you're doing them off campus. So again, that uh, example I gave you about the McNe, you want to make sure that um, the McNe itself uh, is pretty accessible. Uh, but you want to make sure that wherever you're putting your markers or wherever you're having them go um, isn't somewhere that they can only get to if they, you know, go up the back stairs or something like that. Uh, so you want to think about those things. And you also just want to think about maybe having uh, an online version of this bound. So when you're creating this, are there places that you can send them online um, that are sort of VR style or uh, just online websites so that if you have a student who is, uh, for example, right now uh, in quarantine and can't go anywhere, um, or if you just have a student who has very, very limited mobility uh, and doesn't feel comfortable doing this full bound, um, they can do an, an online one. So we're just going to add a quick stage. I'm going to call this uh, stage one Elizabeth Coates Library. And this uh, tool is based off of coordinates. So you do have to put in the exact coordinates of your uh, site that you're wanting them to go to. So you can see right here that it kind of drops me somewhere, I think in the middle of Germany, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so you go up here and I'm just going to put in a quick zip code. So now I can see the Alamo Heights area. Just 
to move this a little bit and zoom in until I find us. Haha, <laughs> here we are. So I've dropped my little marker here and now I can say, okay, this is the one I want to add. Here are our coordinates and I'm going to add it. This has been up for a minute, so um, it's not saving my changes right now. So just remember to always refresh and log back in. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just showing you how to do it. So we're going to keep going for a second. Um, so uh, this is our stage one, uh, stage one Elizabeth Coates Library. And I'm going to add another little piece here. And this time I want to add a mission. And so my mission is going to be um, to go to student services. Okay, so the really important thing about creating scavenger hunts, especially uh, if you're giving them tasks to do of some sort. And remember, when we're doing this for maximum accessibility, if you're doing an online version of this, obviously they can't grab swag, so maybe it's take a screenshot or do something like that. Um, but when you're designing these, it's really, really, really important to make sure that you have uh, clear instructions. So the reason I wrote it like this uh, is to kind of show you what not to do. So go to student accessibility services and grab some swag would work if our student accessibilities office was one particular office um, that was off by itself and they always had, you know, um, notepads or pins, buttons outside of their office. However, our student accessibility services is within the wider Tiger Learning Commons. So if I just write it like this, it might be hard for students um, to know where to go or um, to, who, um, uh, to whom to speak. So I'm just going to add So I'm going to add the specific office they need to go to and what they need to do. And what I would do as well, if I was actually having students or faculty or whoever um, is doing this grab swag, I would add a picture. So you can add uh, pictures, you can add uh, video, sound, links. I would add a picture to this to show them exactly what they're supposed to be grabbing. And then that way there's no confusion if they show up and like um, uh, Myron has hats outside of his office and Spencer has pens outside of his office and uh, whoever's doing the hunt uh, can't figure out what they're supposed to take. So we're going to two them down here. Whenever you do a mission, you want to add a solution. Um, and so for this one, um, I would probably just have them upload a picture from their camera um, to show me that they grabbed a hat or a pen or whatever it is. And I would add that. And so here it shows them what they're supposed to be doing um, and it tells them the directions for doing it. So now I have one action added and I'm just going to add one more, um, add a quiz. I really like that they have Monty Python and the Holy Grail um, things here. So right here it could be uh, which of these is included in the Tiger Learning Commons. All right, so they've got some points that they can add here and you can change those. Um, so you can do all of these different ones. Um, I would probably go with solution input. Um, and so, which services are included in the Tiger Learning Commons. Then when I do a solution input, uh, you'll have them put in um, the solution down here. So we'll just say SAS Writing Center Testing. So we'll have that. Um, all right, so this uh, lets you um, 
force them to answer it if they want to continue. And it tells them um, when you turn this off, you can have them um, do more than one attempt. If it's on, it defaults to one attempt. Um, and you can put in a penalty. So uh, if you want this to be more of a learning experience, you can put in a penalty of zero. If they're doing this for a grade, maybe you have a penalty of 10. Um, you can add hints if you want. Uh, and then you can show the solution. And then also you can give them a time limit, but I wouldn't do that. Um, just again, for accessibility purposes. So, oh. So that's it. Uh, overall, it is pretty easy. Again, it's based off of um, your coordinates, so you want to make sure you have uh, the zip code of wherever you are having them do this. Um, and again, making sure that we think about accessibility and the places that we're sending our students to, how accessible they are um, in terms of mobility, how accessible they are in terms of cost. Um, so if you are having students do this off of campus, uh, are they able to get into these places free? Do they have to pay for anything? Um, do they just have to go to the parking lot of the place, uh, but they don't actually have to go into it? What are you kind of asking of your students when they put this together? But that is how you will put together your action bound.